the low rating community. As you may know, the Reading School Committee approved the district's recommended budget on January 27th. So we'd like to take this chance to share with our students, staff, families, and community members about how this budget will impact the student experience for both next year and beyond. So this budget was developed through the process of both listening and learning uh, over the past several months in our schools. We spent time listening to a variety of stakeholders on both the strengths, challenges, and opportunities in our district. And we've also spent a lot of time in classrooms and in our schools trying to understand the needs and trying to have those needs reflected sort of in what we've invested in here in the budget. So overall, we're hopeful that this budget reflects both the needs and the ideas and perspectives of our community. And through this process of listening and learning over the past several months, uh, three critical priorities have emerged uh, in terms of how we're approaching the district uh, budget process. First, uh, the need to improve academic outcomes and growth for all students in a safe, equitable, and rigorous learning environment. Second, the need to support students' social and emotional needs through multi-tiered instruction and services. And three, our need to enhance adult practices and stream to efficiencies and effectiveness in supporting students. And I think that these, especially one and two, have been amplified uh, in our current pandemic context. So today I'm going to talk through what we've been able to add into our budget through the lens of each of these priorities and how they'll impact the student experience for next year. So let's start with improved academic outcomes. Uh, there's a reduction in the full day tuition fee from $4,450 to $3,600, uh, which is one step closer to universal full day kindergarten. Uh, we know that we are one of 23 districts that currently charges uh, for full day kindergarten. Um, so we are hopeful that this drop helps move us closer to zero, um, but also does not mean that we will stop our efforts to advocate and push forward uh, as quick as we possibly can towards uh, tuition free kindergarten for all. Second, uh, there's see an increase in English language uh, staffing uh, by 1.2 FTE. We have a, and this is in response to an uh, increase in the amount of ELs uh, in our district, and also uh, I think a, a commitment of our district to support both the academic and social emotional needs of our of our English learners. And then uh, bottom of the slide, uh, increased support for ac acceptable elementary school class sizes with the deployment of Endicott teaching fellows. Or Grade four at JE and Killam. These are classes where we're consolidating going from four classes to three. Um, and while the cl classes will remain sort of acceptable class sizes, we feel that this consolidation, we can provide additional support to these classes. There will be an additional licensed teacher uh, in the form of a teaching fellow in these grade levels. Uh, this is through the Endicott Fellow Program where the, the teachers are fifth year uh, master students who are also licensed teachers who will be full time uh, Reading Public Schools employees while they're also pursuing their masters full time at Endicott. Continuing on in terms of improving academic outcomes, you'll see the addition of a academic support center at Reading Memorial High School, which is staffed by both uh, a full time coordinator and two teaching fellows. This is in response to the growing need need of just us to be able to support the academic gaps for students. And the center is, is designed to be both uh, be the hub of intervention and supports for students uh, at the high school level. See an increase in 0.2 FTE for our um, stepping stones program for our students returning from hospital settings and extended time out of school. And you'll also see several investments uh, we believe in that are innovative pathways for our high school students. So we'll be able to offer two new computer science courses through a 0.4 FTE addition at the high school. Um, currently, we offer one computer science course, AP Computer Science. We'll now be able to offer uh, introductory to computer science, introduction to computer science, um, as well as Java C++. So this is the beginning of us moving towards being able to build a more robust uh, pathway in computer science for our students. And again, this is just the beginning of us being able to build out a, a, a more comprehensive program in this area. We'll also invest in, in several dual enrollment courses at Endicott College. So this is a these courses will allow students to get uh, college credits at Endicott College through a RMHS uh, course, which is considered a dual enrollment course. So students will leave RMHS with college credits in hand as they take that class. And during the time in the course, they'll um, they'll also be have access to both on campus and online Endicott resources and will receive a transcript from Endicott College. And also our budget reflects an investment in the Gateway to College program at North Shore Community College, which is an early college program for some students who are significantly behind in credits and provides an early college option 
uh, for some of our students who need something a little bit different outside the traditional school setting. Shifting into the support for students uh, social and emotional needs, our biggest investment financially in the budget was the, the top line here of creating a dual and uh, dual role of adjustment counselor uh, with METCO coordinator at each elementary level. So this is a full time school counselor at each of our elementary uh, schools. Their role is to provide direct social and emotional supports to all of our students. And this role will also serve as a liaison between our, our families uh, and our community. They will also serve as our, our METCO coordinator uh, at each school specific site, which we think will be able to provide more targeted support to our Boston residents students and also help us to build out our expanding METCO program. We've added a 1.0 FTE social workers to the REACH program at the middle school. And also we'll be adding two additional school counselors at the um, secondary level, one at RMHS to provide additional targeted uh, social and emotional support to students, and then also one at uh, Parker. This will uh, provide equalized support at both Coolidge and Parker. Both Coolidge and Parker will have two school psychologists, and also Parker will have now a school counselor, and Coolidge will have a uh, school social worker. I think these top three really align to what we've seen is a significant increase in the social and emotional needs of our students, uh, a lot pandemic related, and we feel that providing these additional this additional access to to uh, support staff is critical for us in responding to needs. And also at the bottom of the slide, you'll see uh, increased health services to, uh, to students through the addition of 1.0 FTE nurse. So what this will be is this will now allow uh, our director of nursing uh, to serve as an administrative uh, director role and oversee uh, the work of the other nurses. I th think we all know this year the, uh, the the challenge that has been on our director to also serve as the director and also be a full time nurse. And we feel that this will allow us to provide more um, more effective support to our nurses and also to, uh, to support the health needs of our students. And shifting into our last category of enhancing adult practices and streamlining systems. Uh, you'll see we're increasing the data specialist by 0.4 FTE. Uh, this is critical for a few reasons. First, for us to be able to provide teachers with timely assessment data that allow them to respond to student needs and um, will allow us to ensure that uh, students have consistent and timely access to online learning platforms. So time isn't lost, uh, uh, you know, or wasted time looking for uh, various curriculum components. And then also, uh, this will be critical for us as a district team and having data to evaluate the success and the effectiveness of various curriculum tools, uh, instructional strategies and assessment, and we'll be able to target both our, our district, school and student level interventions and supports. And then uh, the last bullet too around, uh, we've reallocated funds to professional development. Uh, we've heard from staff the need for us to continue to invest in the development of our staff uh, and the need for us to be um, to build out uh, access to high quality uh, training supports, ongoing coaching and development for our staff. So adding some funding in our professional development line will allow us to support our teachers in, in that way. We'll be presenting this uh, budget to both the, the FinCom and also the town meeting over the next few months. Uh, but as always, if you have any additional questions or would like to talk through any of this in more detail, please let me or anyone on our team know. Uh, we'd like to thank the community for uh, you know, the continued financial investment in our schools and also for the continued thought partnership uh, around what are the best ways that we can move our, our schools forward and meet the needs of our students. So thank you again, everyone, for your time. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you around very soon.